Hello everyone, this is Urvishi Srivastava from Department of Biotechnology, Faculty and Engineering and Technology in Rama University. So my this series of lectures is all about biotechnology, but we will be discussing more about molecular biology, which is one of the most important subjects of biotechnology. So what is molecular biology? In molecular biology, we deal with the structure and functions of macromolecules, macromolecules basically DNA and proteins. So these lectures are all about molecular biology and we will be going to discuss about it one by one. So one of the most important topic of the molecular biology is Hershey and Chase experiment that we are going to discuss today. So let us start it. So this Hershey and Chase experiment was being conducted in the year 1952. So let us start with this experiment. Okay. So what does this Hershey and Chase experiment proves? It proves that DNA is the genetic material and not the protein. What was happening is that in the earlier times there was a confusion in the scientists that whether the DNA or the protein is the genetic material. So in this experiment Hershey and Chase tries to prove that no only DNA is the genetic material and not the protein. So again and again I am using this word genetic material. So I hope my students know what is genetic material. Genetic material is that material which passes from one generation to the other generation. Okay. So what happens? in this experiment we are going to use the bacteriophage and E. coli. Okay? So in this experiment we will be using E. coli and bacteriophage. So I am making the diagram of bacteriophage like this and this is my E. coli. So I hope you know what is bacteriophage as the name says bacteriophage, phage means virus that means any virus that infects bacteria is said to be as bacteriophage. This is the capsid and this one is the tail and this is my E. coli. Okay. So as we know that DNA contains phosphorus and my proteins contain sulfur, it has many amino acids that has sulfur in it. Okay. So in this experiment what we see? There are two scenarios. In the first scenario, we are assuming that my protein is the genetic material. This first scenario says that protein is the genetic material. And this is my second scenario which tries to explain that no, not the protein but the DNA is the genetic material. This is my scenario number two which try to prove that the genetic material is DNA. So in this scenario number one, since I am saying that genetic material is protein over here, okay. So over here what we are doing is we are radio labeling my protein, we are tagging the protein with the radio labeled sulfur, with the radio labeled sulfur which is said to be as sulfur 35 we are using in it, okay. So the protein part, this my, this one, this capsid, this is the coat protein, okay. So what we are doing over here is we are radio labeling it with S35, this capsid region or the code protein we are labeling it with S35 and over here we are assuming that no not the protein but the DNA is the genetic material. So what we are doing over here we are tagging the DNA with radio labeled phosphorus with radio labeled phosphorus which is phosphorus 32 which is present over here in the nucleus okay and what we are doing it we are tagging it with the radio labeled phosphorus. So this experiment is divided into three phases. This is my phase number one, this is phase number two and this is phase number three or you can also call it as a step. This is step number one, this is step number two and this is a step number three. Okay. So this is step number one or the phase number one is said to be as the infection phase or the adsorption phase. Why infection over here? Because my bacterial phase is infecting the E. coli. That is the reason why it is said to be as the infection phase or you can also call it as the incubation phase. Okay, you can also call it as a incubation phase. And during this phase what will happen? The genetic material whether the protein or the DNA will be incorporated in the bacteria. This is my E. coli. It is also having its own DNA. Okay. This is this is E. coli, it is also having its own DNA. Okay, so whatever the genetic material is, okay, in this case we are assuming it, it is as a protein. In this case we are assuming my genetic material is a DNA. So whatever is the genetic material that will going to be transfer in my E. coli and it will get incorporated over here, okay. 
So now we come on to this step number two. Okay, in the step number one, what has happened? The genetic material that has been transferred in the E. coli. Okay, so over here, the DNA was the genetic material, so it has been now incorporated in the in the what? In the E. coli genetic material. So this E. coli genetic material is having its own DNA plus that radio label DNA, that radio label DNA which was having phosphorus thirty two. Okay, and over here, since we know that protein is not the genetic material, it wasn't able to transfer in this E. coli's DNA. Okay, so now we come on to the step number two. Okay, so this is step number two is also known as the agitation phase or the blending phase. And what happens in this step number two is the breaking of interaction. Is the breaking of interaction. breaking of interaction so i'm saying interaction breaking of interaction interaction between what interaction between my e coli and the phage okay so now in this step number 2 you can see the diagram over here the e coli and this phage are no more interacting with each other now so the last step is the step number 3 which is the centrifugation phase this is the centrifugation step what happens over here is after centrifugation what we will see we will going to get the pellets and supernatants this is my pellets and this one is the supernatant over here okay so as we know that this pellet and supernatant get separated on the basis of their weight so in the pellet we're going to have e coli and over here in the supernatant we're going to have the phase that broken phase okay that broken phase now so in the last step that is the centrifugation step okay what we have seen over here that after centrifugation this is my supernatant and this is the pellet this is my supernatant and this is the pellet okay this was my case number 2 in which we are assuming that the dna is the genetic material this is my case number 1 in which i am assuming that the protein is my genetic material what do i see over here is that in the supernatant it is having proteins it is having proteins that was been labeled with the sulfur 35 and over here in case number 2 i am seeing that the pellets is having dna which was labeled with phosphorus 35 now why are we getting the dna labeled with phosphorus 35 in pellets over here and phospho protein labeled with sulfur 35 in the supernatant over here the reason is because my protein is not the genetic material so it wasn't able to pass over here and it wasn't able to transfer to the genetic material it wasn't able to incorporate into the genetic material of the e coli but in the case number 2 since my genetic material is dna it was very well able to get transferred in the e coli it was able to incorporate in the genetic material of the e coli so this is the reason why we are seeing this supernatant which was having this protea phage in it which was having the broken parts of phage in it we are seeing the pr labeled protein over here that is the labeled s35 as a supernatant over here but in case number 2 we are seeing the dna labeled with phosphorus 35 in the pellets why in the pellets because the pellets are having e coli the pellets is having e coli and this e coli has incorporated the genetic material of the phage in it which was carrying the phosphorus 32 so what does this whole experiment concludes this whole experiment concludes that the dna is the genetic material and not the protein okay so keep this in mind that protein is not the genetic material and the what is the genetic material that is the dna this DNA is responsible for inheritance and not the protein. So thank you very much. I hope my this lecture was beneficial to you. And for more lectures on molecular biology, keep watching my further videos.